G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and you know I love experiments and this one here is a doozy and it's not finished yet. About five months ago, I put a bunch of ingredients into this very jar. Three different types of chilies, all from the backyard, onions, garlic, ginger. I got a brine, I poured that over all these ingredients and then I left it to ferment for five months on the kitchen bench. That is a long time and in this video we're going to find out if not only did it last and not go off after five months but actually does this turn into a decent condiment i want to try and make it into some type of sauce let's get into it Now the problem I had here, you can see I've glad wrapped this up and that's because you can't believe it, my luck. We had a big cheese platter that was just sitting as it normally does in our kitchen, our tiny country kitchen. What happened was I moved the toaster and the blooming thing rolled into the serving sort of little area and it knocked the jar off the shelf onto the floor. It didn't break the bottle but it broke the plastic top and it poured out a lot of the juice in here as well, which was a bit of a problem. But hopefully we've got enough juice to be able to make up for it and still be able to create this type of sauce that I had envisioned. A fermented sauce out of these ingredients and hopefully it tastes really good. When Hoseling did that story on me, you might have seen that video. Well, in that video, they wanted me to make up a ferment. So I did it on the spot, grabbed some ingredients from around the garden, put it in a jar, and then they filmed that so that they could use it as B-roll in the video interview. Well, that's how this experiment was born. And so I just let it go. It kept on bubbling away for about three weeks, and then it stopped bubbling and really the fermenting process then stopped and I wondered would it go off if I just left it sit there and it didn't and I've done other ferments before but I've never really filmed them or anything like that where I've just left it go and go and go and it's still been okay but that was mainly just probably eight weeks or so this is five months so without any further ado Let's blitz this up and let's have a taste of it and see if we could actually use this somehow in either cooking or straight as a table condiment to use with foods. Okay, I've got my jar. We'll pour it into this. You can see it's got quite a bit of liquid. And look at the ingredients. Still chunky, a little bit softer, but not over the top soft, still fairly hard. The ginger, really quite hard. Mmm, it's lost its pungency. <coughs> it's still a bit pungent, but it's not as pungent. And it is a bit softer to chew. Mmm, I like that fermented pickle taste. Anyway, let's do it. Put that there. Let's hope there's enough juice to blitz this up and have a sauce. You know what? I think there was plenty of liquid left in there by the looks of it. Look how vibrant and red that is. So I guess that's the pigmentation from those red chilies. It smells a bit like a chili sauce. Not overpowering. There was a mixture of heat in those chilies. Some were very hot, jalapeno, a small bird's eye yellow one, and a cayenne, which wasn't that hot. Look at the consistency. It's like a I suppose a tomato soup consistency. I bottled some. It looks sensational and it smells wonderful. Looks great in the bottle. So one good 300 ml bottle and I've got about a cup left over here as well. What I have here is some ham. 
I've got some buttered bread, some mozzarella cheese, and some sharp cheddar cheese. Okay, I'll just give it a bit of a stir, and then I'll pour it onto this spoon and let it seep out. You can see how chunky it is. Look at that, almost soupy. The sharp cheese first, just because it's first on the plate. Dip it in. Well, I should have probably had a go on its own, shouldn't I? But you're usually going to eat a sauce like this with something. Mmm. Yeah, it is nice. I did have a little lick off the spoon before I came over, but not much. So I've got an idea. Let's do this. It's got that classic you know, fermented cucumber taste. That's the same sauerkraut, fermented veggies, kimchi, that type of fermented taste. I can't, it's got a nice bit of heat. It's not too hot. Uh, it really is a fantastic balance, just probably by sheer luck that I sort of didn't overdo the ginger. You could probably put some turmeric in here as well, just a little bit to make it even healthier as an antioxidant. Remember, this isn't cooked. This is live food, simply fermented and made even liver with bacteria. This stuff is full of antioxidants, untouched by heat. The gut bacteria, for your health, it's gonna be incredible. Well, for my health anyway. And for yours, if you do this type of sauce, and I would recommend it right now, this is sensational. This is one of the best sauces I've ever made. I've never made a sauce like this where I've just fermented a whole bunch of different types of vegetables and then just blitzed them up. You want those types of ingredients to be sauce ingredients like the traditional chilies, perhaps tomatoes. Anyway, the sharp cheese goes well with it. Let's try some mozzarella dipped beautifully in it, lathered in it. Mozzarella, lighter. Mmm, it'd be good on pizza, be good in a sandwich. Mmm, it'd be good with, um, I reckon, pork as well. Sausage, that's nice. Bit of ham, try that. I won't take too much longer, you're getting the gist. Mmm, pardon me eating it with my fingers and talking, but I need to show you this. I want to anyway. Let's rip this beautiful fresh bread open. Got the butter on it and let's give it a good dip. This is one of my favorite tests for sauces. It's just buttered bread because it seems to bring out the flavors and it's one of my all time best ways to taste test. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's speaking to me. The earthiness, the process of making a sauce like this, the freshness, I can almost feel the health running through my veins from my stomach and taste buds. It's hard to describe, but if you've never experimented with fermentation before, it just goes to show me how flexible fermentation can be as well. Five months on the kitchen bench, just sitting there bubbling away, then it stopped bubbling and I just left it. And this will last now, this sauce, probably another month in the fridge. You've got to keep it refrigerated now. And I would say at least a month. You could freeze, I suppose, but it'd be best just to eat it and it will go anyway. I'll have this and the boys and Nina will have this eaten within probably a fortnight. Well, I'm gonna finish this all off. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big fermenting thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video around because that helps my channel out lots. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.